January Journal 2021 Log Entry Day 21 Gratitude I woke up early, walked to the kitchen and got myself some caffeine, but I didn't feel like I didn't want to live. I didn't feel that I really needed the dose of caffeine today, but I just wanted to make sure so I'm not yawning in the recording and having to edit it out later. I am very grateful that I am truly creating a habit for myself. And at the same time, if I feel like I cannot accomplish the goal of the day, I'm gentle with myself. It's a good balance to have. I'm getting there. I'm happy and I'm grateful. Though this is not perfect. And I know there are some ugly things and thoughts in the back of my mind. So I am grateful for the people who want to be a part of my life and my friends, my parents. And I know that what I am going to say will sound like a stolen quote by someone who is unfortunately not with us anymore. But I know very well that the brain that's between my ears, you know, that piece of skull that I have, it's kind of like a bad neighborhood and I should not be there by myself all the time. It is good to have some people that can support me or help me out to direct my focus elsewhere. Because I realize that when my focus is on helping other people or being productive or keeping myself accountable, doing something with my life instead of just sitting in silence with myself, then it's good. But when I am with myself, by myself, and it's not for the purpose of creating some story, things can get very ugly real fast. And that's what depression really does to you. It leaves you hopeless and helpless, and it gives you this idea that there's nothing you can do, and it will eat you up inside until you cannot take it anymore. And then you will end yourself, victim of whatever monster lives in your head. I'm grateful that I realize that isolation absolute isolation is not good for myself and I am no longer sabotaging my life like that. Yes, I'm still a hermit and yes, I will still take time for myself and isolate when the moment of writing a new story shows up. When I'm working on character development or anything else that I have to do at the moment or self-edits, whatever, I might isolate myself. But it doesn't mean that I have to spend all my life alone. I'm happy and very thankful to reach this point. I didn't see it coming. I'm thankful for my parents who are very kind, but at the same time they are very honest and they are there to support me and also to call me out on my bullshit when it's necessary. Very few people have that kind of effect in me that they are able to criticize me or what I'm doing in a constructive way that doesn't feel diminishing or devaluing. That's rare and I appreciate it because it makes me grow. There are many, many things that I am grateful for, including you, those who find these transmissions and know who I am and get to know me with my gratitude segments and don't mind about it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. If you ever read the thing down below and see that I have a plan for every day of the month, because otherwise I don't know what am I going to do with this thing. I realized that I was talking about this topic of the day yesterday a little bit. So not to repeat myself and also because changes are healthy, I came up with something else. And it will sound like I planned it all along, but no, trust me, I will tell you. No. It happened after yesterday's transmission, while I was body reading with a friend. We are reading a book together at the same time, like chapter by chapter, we discuss the chapters. It's an amazing experience. And it came up to me that I'm going to talk about this. Dear authors, let's not make our books predictable. Yeah, it sounds like I planned it all along. No, no, I didn't. I was so happy yesterday when I couldn't tell for sure where was that book going. And I'm quite good at that. I know when things get formulaic, I'm ready to predict who's gonna win, who's gonna lose, who's the love interest, how they're gonna do what they have to do. It becomes a little bit boring and it triggers this ugly thing in me that I don't like, honestly. I don't like the sense of arrogance because I don't like that emotion. And sometimes I have it when I open a chapter, the first chapter, and I already know where you're going and I already know what's gonna happen and it's... <laughs> It's horrible because I know that I know nothing. But when I open a book and I know everything, just with a few pages, and like I know that the author is kind of following a formula, I rarely finish those books. If I finish them, I leave a very disappointing review. And I don't like it. I really don't like this feeling of, oh shit, it feels like I know everything and stories are just formulaic now. No, it doesn't have to be. This is one of the biggest reasons why I detest the Save the Cat book. 
This and Jessica Brody's sort of egotistical narrative voice. I did. I really didn't like it. I, ugh, eh, Jessica, please. She sounded very enthusiastic, which is nice, but also she sounds like she discovered the secret. Yes, I am referring another book. The secret to best-selling stories and every single story out there in the world has this winning formula. She used some wording of that sort, as if story structure and those particular beat sheets are the rule and everybody has to follow it. And as I see a lot of new writers and popular writers promoting this book like it was the eighth wonder of the world, I... I suffer. So yesterday, during our buddy reading, I was pleasantly surprised and very happy to not know what is going on. For sure. I mean, I know what's going on because the author puts a lot of thought and care in the way that the author planned this whole thing. And as it's a multi-POV story with so many characters and so many different worlds, I'm sure the author really had to work with plans and revisions and outlines and guidelines. But the author is not playing on a formula. In fact, the author is kind of switching things around and playing with structure while at the same time knowing very well what he's doing. He's a very tricky author, which I love, and he keeps us guessing and intrigued and enthusiastic about what's yet to come. If you're still figuring out structure like I am, because I'm still figuring it out like concretely. Please don't take this the wrong way. Sometimes we have to. We have to practice with some more traditional structures for stories. So just so we can get the characters and the storyline right. But no, not every story has to follow a formula. And I love to see people who want to experiment and people who can surprise me and teach me that my sometimes funny attempts of clairvoyance can be wrong. <laughs> I cannot predict everything. And I'm thankful for this because it brings back the fun of storytelling that I lose when people are telling me that this is the structure that you have to follow and these are the beat sheets that you have to do and these are the character arcs and the steps and the no 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 you take away all the fun and you make it sound like it's rigid and set in stone when it's not I too had an outline for this month's log entries. An outline, not a script. And yet you see today something came up and I changed it. And I love it. It reminds me of those self-help books that tell you that you have to schedule every single minute of your life because habits and this is what successful people do. Yeah, okay, but are they happy? I don't know. I mean, I don't know them. This figurative successful people. I don't know. I didn't feel this while reading, for example, the seven basic plots book. Yes, those are the seven basic plots, but there were even some exceptions. It was very interesting to see, like, this is the blueprint, but this is just a blueprint and you can work around it or change it or switch some of the structure points around. It is just a guideline, not a formula. And it will change from book to book, even in a series. This is how you spice things up. It's not only about raising the stakes. Yeah, you can raise the stakes all you want, but if I can already predict where the stakes are rising and where they are going, I'm bored. Even if even if the world is about to end, because I no longer care, because I already know that the good guy is going to win regardless. This is just a preference I have as a reader. If you like your formula stories, predicting everything and just escaping into a new world, that's kind of similar to the very last thing you read. Okay, that is your personal reading taste. And again, there is nothing wrong with that. These are just my thoughts and my preference and how I feel when I read stories. Because I don't like this annoying feeling of arrogance that I, I already know this. I get bored. And no, I don't know everything. I don't like this feeling when it comes up. 
It's nasty. I don't like it. But I admit that I have felt it. I have no shame in admitting my flaws. It is a flaw. I don't like it. And hopefully someday I can correct it. But I love to fall in the hands of an author that puts a lot of thought and care in the development of the story and the characters and the world and the plot and the structure. And yet the author keeps it interesting, unpredictable and skillfully developed. That's what has me enthusiastic about reading with my friend whatever next chapter we are reading the next day. It's like, wow, I can't wait to resume this reading. It's wonderful. And I have felt it not only with this book. It's not that this book is one uh, miracle among... No, no. I love it when it happens whenever that happens. I have felt it multiple times with indie authors, with traditionally published authors, but it's kind of rare, especially and this is going to hurt, but especially with debut authors, oof, I can feel the restrictions that not only the traditional industry, but like the community in general put upon this author. If the reader says, well, I don't really know where this is going. Like, I like it, but I don't know where this is going. That should be a good thing, not a bad thing. Now, if the author doesn't know where we are going ourselves, then I think that would be a problem. I'm not saying that being completely unpredictable and random is the right way to go. I mean, when the author knows exactly what's going on, even if the reader doesn't, if you know what you're doing and you know how and why you're breaking some rules and how it benefits your story, then let the readers not know. That's a wonderful feeling because it keeps the reader turning pages and that's what we want. We want our books to be more than just a one-off, easy peasy, one afternoon reading. I mean, at least I know I want that. I know that I don't want my book to be a one-off wonder. If I can make a story that will make the readers think and revisit the book more than twice in their life and discover something that they didn't see before, I know that I am doing a good job. So yeah, I am one of those readers who's very thankful and happy when the author is skillful and thoughtful enough to keep me surprised and incapable of predicting the formula of the story because there's not a real formula or they just tweaked it around a little bit to keep it intriguing and surprising and refreshing. Those are the authors I would love to see in my ebooks and audiobooks etc. That is the kind of author that I want to become. So if that's your kind of jam and you like stories that you don't really know where we are going or you think you know where it's going and then oops, it turns out to be something different but it's interesting and somewhat satisfying if you get to pick the nuance of it. Yes, that's the kind of thing that I want to do. That's the kind of literature that I want to read and that's the kind of literature that I want to share. So thank you so much for joining in this ride. Thank you for being here and thank you for listening. Follow. I am not the fortune and the fame or the same person telling you to forfeit the game. I came in the ring like a dog on a chain and I found that the underbell is sicker than it seems. And it seems ugly, but it could get worse. Cause even a blueprint is a gift and a curse. Cause once you've got a theory of how the thing works, everybody wants the next thing to be just like the first. And I'm not a robot, I'm not a monkey. I will not dance even if the beat's funky. Opposite or lazy, far from a punk. Y'all ought to stop talking, start trying to catch up, motherfucker.